Hey, I'm Amy Cross, and today I want to talk to you about how to hire a professional genealogist and some things that you want to think about if you want to do that. I have been a professional genealogist for 10 years now, although I've been doing genealogy for 40. Yes, really. And so I wanted to just kind of sit down and talk to you about what you might want to do. It makes a great gift. And as we're moving into the holidays, I thought this might be something that people would be interested in. And so it's hard to find a professional genealogist. And I want to give you some clues on how to kind of get the most bang for your buck. Okay. So the first thing that I would tell you is I want you to think about exactly what you want to accomplish. Too often I have people reach out to me and say, I want to do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And it's just way too much and it takes too long and it's not reasonable. It's not a realistic project goal. You want to think of what you want to do. If we're working in the 1800s, early 1800s or 1700s, a good goal might be to identify the parents of an individual or just the father of an individual. Um, maybe you do want to go ahead and build your family tree, but if you find somebody that's like, oh yeah, I can do six generations for you in 10 hours, don't hire them. They're not going to be a good researcher for you. Um, that's not a good choice. It takes time to research. That's one of the other things that I think happens more often than not. A lot of people re have reached out to me and have said, I want you to do something and they think that I'm gonna be able to do it in a couple of hours. And it, that's just not reasonable, I can't. If I'm going to do it responsibly, I need to be able to take the time and make sure that I'm not making mistakes. And then on top of it, I need to document it. If you're not getting documentation on your project, then there may be a problem there. You want to know that they did the work and you want to see their train of thought and you want to see what they looked at. So that means that you should be seeing something like a research calendar and there's different ways to do it. But what a research calendar is, is a listing of the things that the genealogist has looked at. You want some kind of a report. Ancestry started doing summary reports and a lot of other people have picked that up. I like summary reports because they don't take me as long. If I'm doing a full report for somebody with footnotes and a lot of really intense documentation and a lot of verbiage on what I found, that takes me half of my research time at least sometimes even more than that so think about that I'm going to be spending a third to half of my time documenting the things that I see so you want to kind of keep that in mind um, one of the other things that you want to do is you want to find out from other people whether or not they're happy with this company, whether you're using a company or an individual researcher. Sometimes I see people complaining, putting up negative reviews on somebody or a company because they didn't get what they were wanting to find. But I hate to tell you, sometimes in genealogical research, the results are negative. We didn't find what you wanted. However, we have eliminated da 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 and we have next steps of things that you want to do. So be realistic when you go into the process and with whom you hire. So where do you go? There's a couple of good companies out there that you can reach out to that can take on your projects, but you can also go to the Association of Professional Genealogists, and then you can search by people, by location or whatever. So my recommendation to you is if you want to extend your family tree into Ireland, first you want to make sure that you have all of the information that you need from the United States. You really want to try to narrow down the specific area in Ireland or whatever country it is that you want to have the research done in. Once you've done that in the United States, you're better off with an Irish researcher or whatever country we're talking about. Sometimes it's helpful to hire somebody that is local in the area that you're looking for. However, I'm going to give you a little warning there. Sometimes you have these genealogists that really haven't done a lot of professional research that live locally and they put themselves in APG and then they, you know, say, yeah, I can do that for you, but you're not going to get a really great quality product. So look at their website, look at the work that they do. I've had people ask me for samples of reports that I've done for other clients. I'll always talk with somebody on the phone about what they would like to accomplish and we kind of talk about what I think I can do for them. And I'm going to be realistic with you because it's not fair for me to waste your money and time is money. And so I want to one, save time for you as much as I possibly can and utilize your money well. Rates for a professional genealogist are really all over the board. They started about $30 and I think Ancestry is charging either $150 or $200 an hour. 
So you're going to see kind of a wide range of pricing. Um, just make sure that their experience equals their price, okay? Let me tell you something that is one of my pet peeves as a professional genealogist. I will either have one of the two things frequently happen. One, the client either does not give me a lot of information, and especially if I then find things that they already know but they didn't give it to me, that's a waste of their money. It's a waste of my time, but I'm getting paid for it. So it's really a waste of their money. So you wanna gather up your information and make sure you give the researcher what you know because one, it's gonna save them a lot of time. They may need to go back and kind of verify that everything is correct. Um, they may wanna be looking for other possibilities because that's good research, but they still wanna know what you know, okay? So get it together. I know it takes time. I know you don't want to. I know you wanna hire this person to take it away from you. And if that's really what you wanna do and you really don't care about spending the extra money, then that's fine. The other thing that will happen a lot, and it's really hard as well, which this sounds kind of like weird because of what I just said, is they give me too much. They'll give me so much information that I spend hours and hours and hours going through it. That's their time, that's their money. So if you can summarize information, bullet point information, only send the information that pertains to your project. I don't care about somebody in another line that we're not even looking at. I want to know about what you have for that person, okay? And if you have a document that you've written, that you've kind of written up a history, make sure that the document is to the point, that it doesn't go on and on, because then I'm going to be spending the time reading a document that maybe is really fluffy which is great if I'm going to give the document to other family members, but it takes time and it could take me an extra hour or two. And that's a lot of money. So you can go through a document like that and pull out the other stuff and just keep in the basic information. It doesn't have to be written beautifully. It doesn't have to be gorgeous and perfect punctuation and whatever, I don't care. I just want the information and I can guarantee you any other researcher is gonna tell you the same thing. So spend some time gathering up what you have. So let's sum it up. The three main things I want you to remember when you hire a professional genealogist. One, know what you wanna know. Narrow down your research goal and figure out exactly what you're looking for and that will help you know where you're going and who might be the best fit for you. Two, find somebody that is a good fit for you that has experience that you feel comfortable with that you think is gonna do a good job for you. And three, gather up your information. Make sure you give them what they need but not a bunch of stuff that they don't need. And I guess a fourth bonus one is have realistic expectations. I hope this has been really helpful for you. I hope that you'll feel more confident now in some things to think about when you wanna hire a professional genealogist. I am taking some clients, I don't take a ton, but I also coach. If you're interested in me doing a project for you, you can reach out to me with my website, which the link is right up here. If you are wanting me to coach you, or if you just want to donate to the channel to help support the channel, a couple of bucks a month, you can reach out to me right over there. Um, coaching ranges in third, from $35 to $99 an hour, depending on group or, or um, individual coaching. And it's a great way, an inexpensive way for me to help you out, but you gotta be wanting to do the work yourself. If you've inherited a lot of genealogy and you really aren't quite sure what to do with it, maybe you're not a genealogist, you just you don't want to throw it away, please don't throw it away, but you don't know what to do with it, check out this video right there. Hope it helps. Have a great day.